Hey, this is Luke Simons with SaltStrong. Gonna do uh, just a quick tutorial on, on how to do group rigs. And this is a unique method in the fact that it's both environmentally friendly and it'll help save you time and money while out on the water fishing. Because really the biggest problem on a lot of traditional grouper rigs, and, and this is a style that, that many people use, is they, they use a weight that is, that is fixed. It's either fixed on the line or there's a swivel tied above the weight that's obviously gonna block the weight from, uh, from going off the line. Because because these grouper, they, they of course, they live near structure. Structure is their home. So that when you hook into a big grouper, even some small grouper really, is they'll, they'll get back underneath that ledge and in many cases, they're gonna break your line, unfortunately. So we need to plan for that and we, we need to make sure that those big grouper that do break off, they're not just easy, easy uh, targets for shark. So with this traditional style of a grouper rig, if, if your line gets, bro uh, gets broken off above, above the weight, this, this fish is now dragging that weight around, which again, could likely get snagged on, on coral itself and it'll be pinned on the bottom and the next shark that comes around is going to have a very easy meal and that's going to be, going to be taking uh, your and my fillets away from us. So very important is to not use a, a weight that is, uh, is, is stopped from sliding off the, the actual line in the event that uh, a lot, the line is broken. All right, so a quick way to get around that problem is just to tie a knot that is very slim, just a very slim knot that the weight can actually go through. And you can see here, this is the knot going from my braid to the top of the leader, and the, and the leader, the, the weight can move up and down the, the leader, which is, which is important. But more importantly, is that if the line does break, say that the braid does get broken somehow, and then the fish swims away, it'll just go straight off, straight over the, the knot, and it'll be off on the ground, and it'll be, it'll be away from the grouper. It will not pin the grouper down to the ground. So uh, this knot is called the FG knot. Again, very, very strong knot. More importantly, it is incredibly thin. It is just simply braid coiled around the actual knot. And to learn how to tie this, you can look down below, and we'll have links to exactly how to tie this knot. The other benefit of this style of, uh, of making a grouper rig is that, that we know, we plan ahead. We know exactly where the weak point is in the system and we make that weak point down at the very end so that if we do get stuck on the bottom, uh, we have 80 pound tests where the, the weight is, so the, the, the weight will nick the line eventually and we need a heavier line there. So we have 80 pound line that the weight is touching. Below that, we have a 60 pound line that is going down to the hook. And at the very end, to attach to the hook, we have a loop knot. This is a cray loop knot. These loop knots are, are slightly weaker than the, uh, than the more the snug knots. So if we, do get, if we do get hung up, we get this, this hook is stuck on the bottom somehow. When we, when we break the line off, the, this knot right here is gonna break. So that all we have to do is simply replace the hook and we'll be back ready to fishing. It, it, that's so much quicker and less expensive than having to, to re, redo all the line. And then of course, get another weight, uh, again, where we know exactly where the weak point is. It's right here. And so plan ahead and that way you lose less tackle and can be fishing more than you are re-rigging. All right, so now I'll just explain the knots. And again, uh, to learn each of them, there'll be videos down below if you're on our website. Um, so the first knot is from the braid to the top of the 80 pound test. We use the FG knot. Again, it's just a very, very strong knot, incredibly thin, awesome knot. Be sure to, if you use braid, be sure to learn this knot. It is, it is incredible. Um, then down to the bottom of that, we tie, let me get this weight down, is we tie a perfection loop. So the, at the end of the 80 pound test is a perfection loop. And that's just a simple loop that, it, that allows us to tie something else to it. And it's a, but it's, again, it's a very small loop, very strong knot and easy to tie. Video down below as well. So this next knot is tying the final leader. This is the 60 pound leader to the loop, almost like you're tying to the eye of a, of a lure, really. In this case, I'm using the Orvis knot, but really any, any good knot can, uh, can be used, like the Palomar knot, the Uni knot, there's a ton of options here. And again, this is the 60 pound leader. We're gonna just slide that all the way up to the hook. You can see we actually use the, I use this rig for grouper, got a little diced up there on the, on the structure. But then at the very end we use the, uh, the cray loop knot. And again, this is a very quick, easy knot to tie, very strong. However, it's just slightly weaker than all the others. So again, we do get break offs. It's gonna be right here. And as far as the, the lengths of line, I prefer to have about a four foot section of leader going from the, uh, the end of the weight to the hook. That way the bait has a good amount of room to travel. So on this top section of line here, I'd like to have about, maybe about a foot and a half of line, just a, a short amount, but this needs to be the strongest, strongest line in the, in the whole assembly because in many cases, this weight is down, 
getting the, the, most, uh, the, the most abrasion on the, uh, on the actual bottom. So right above the weight is going to get the, the most impacts to, uh, to bottom structure. So we want this to be as strong as possible. So when I, when I want to have a 60 pound test to the, uh, to the actual hook, then I'm going to have about 80, 80 or more here on this, uh, on this upper leader. And if I want, same thing, where if I want to have a stronger line from going after a really big grouper and heavier structure, I'll put 80 pound test on the bottom section and then either 100 or up to 120 pound uh, for this top section to hold the weight. Because again, this is, this is going to be the area that gets a ton of, of uh, abrasion on the bottom. All right, so to, to tie this rig, there's really not much gear needed. Uh, you just need, uh, again, in this case, I'm having 80 pound test. So this is 80 pound test that holds the weight in place. So that is the abrasion, the, the highest uh, strength in the entire assembly. Then we're going to tie the perfection loop, go to the 60 pound test. And uh, you could use fluorocarbon. I actually just use this Berkeley Bing game in many cases. Does does great job. I really enjoy it. Uh, of course, we need the weight and then a hook. I highly recommend circle hooks and then something to cut line with. And that's really it. So you don't need much. Very simple. And again, just have very important to have a slim knot at the top of the line where the weight is being held. The weight can slide off in the event that there is a break off. Very important. And then down at the bottom, we have a, enough room ab below the weight in between the weight and the actual bait for the, uh, the bait fish to, to be able to look natural and swim around. So uh, final tip on, on how to store this assembly on your rod, because when you're not fishing, if you're on the boat and you're moving to another spot or going out or going in, is that the worst thing you can do is have this weight so that it, it's, it's midway up your rod or, or higher. Because this weight, as you, as you hit waves, it's going to be flying around. It's going to be just a, a projectile that can, uh, worst case, you know, actually break your rod literally, but, but it could also just, just weaken it and, uh, and chip it away and so that the next time you hook in a big fish, it's gonna snap in half. So very important to have the weight down by your rod. So I, I have the weight, I just get it down about to the length of the, the butt of the rod, or the reel, and then loop that around, and then I will let the, uh, the hook, I'll just pull the hook up to the next eye and just go and just put the hook around that eye and then just, do that last turn and we're done. So again, when you're, when you're running, if this thing's shaking around, it's just the weight's stuck right there next to the rod. It can slide up and down, but it's always gonna be just held right there. It's, it's gonna be out of trouble, out of the way. This hook is high enough so that most people, when you carry your rods, if you carry them in bulk at the end of the day, you're gonna be holding in, in one of these areas. You're not gonna be holding way out here. So the hook's out of the way, the weight's out of the way, and then and you're, everything's there ready to go as soon as you're ready to fish. So that's it. Again, just wanted to just do this video for help on all the knots. Look down below. It's just a, they're all easy to tie. It just takes a few times to get used to them. So practice up. Let us know if you have any questions. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so. We can't wait to see you again soon. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong and wet a line today Nothing better on a Saturday night than an ice cold beer and a fish fry and talking about them big ones that got away.